According to the Department of Labor, almost half of all workers are women, and 40% of working women are the primary breadwinners in their families. Yet women in Flint, Saginaw, and Bay City, specifically unmarried women, are the most economically insecure today. A local congressman is working to help with this. We're focusing in now, and joining us is Representative Dan Kildee from Flint, and we want to thank you, as always, thank for you. being a part of our show. It's good to be here. Why don't we first um, just kind of explain what economically insecure insecure means? Well, for people who are economically insecure, it means that their wages perhaps are not sufficient to support a working family. They have to turn to family or other agencies to provide basic support. But because our economy is so tenuous right now, it mm -hmm. often means that while they may find work, it's not permanent work that they can look at as a career that they can invest in and afford to make long-term life decisions like the purchase of a home. Uh, so what we're trying to do is, is deal with this issue of economic insecurity. And of course, what we're finding is the way we should deal with that is by first making sure that women are economically secure. So many of the two-thirds of the people who earn a minimum wage, for example, in this country are women. It's yeah. one of the ways we could deal with economic insecurity. And, and let's talk about uh, women, if you will, mm -hmm. in the workforce. Why is it that in 2014, women are still making less than men. Well, you know, it wasn't that long ago uh, that it was perfectly acceptable to pay women, or at least it was said to be acceptable, to pay women less than men. Because the thought was, and this is antiquated thinking that was obviously never right, but the thought was that, you know, men were breadwinners and that the woman, the woman in the household typically was holding a second job. You know, that it was it's obsolete. To supplement. Or to just supplement. And it's, it's, it was never fair then, but it's obviously unfair now. So we have this history that we have yet to fully correct. Uh, there are still employers who pay women less than their male counterparts. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that the Paycheck Fairness Act would do would be to strengthen uh, the authority that people have, the ability that people have to get redressed. For women, for example, not to be penalized for sharing, or any worker for sharing their uh, salary information so that they can be empowered to be their best uh, own advocate. We've got a long way to go. Yeah, well, we're making a start. We making are. Making a start. And you mentioned the uh, Paycheck Fairness Act, but that's just one of three things that you're working on, do you know, to help bridge this gap and uh, to help make uh, women more economically secure. Let's talk about the minimum wage increase. Right. Well, like I said, almost two-thirds of the Americans earning the minimum wage are women. It's not a living wage. A person who is trying to raise a family on the minimum wage right now lives in poverty. So one of the ways to increase equity, fairness in our economy, would be to raise the minimum wage. And of course, what that would mean, disproportionately, it would be the women of the United States who would benefit by having that minimum wage increased. Today's minimum wage is 30% lower than it was in real dollars in 1968. So what we've had is growing disparity between the, those who are doing really well and those who work for a living. And women are paying the heaviest price for that. And we've got to correct it. Now, let's very quickly, uh, before we get to the event that's coming up uh, on Wednesday, talk about Preschool for All, another initiative that you're working on. Right. Because often uh, a woman in the workforce has principal responsibility for caring for children, providing access to preschool, universal access to preschool, opens up pathways for women that otherwise are not available. So we want to see that happen. Uh, there is an event coming up this Wednesday. Right. You tell us about the event. Sure. So on Wednesday from 1 to 3 p.m. at the University of Michigan Flint, we have a, an event. It's called When Women Succeed, America Succeeds. It's a chance for us to have a conversation about federal policy, but about our communities especially, and how we can be more inclusive, how we can uh, develop policy that empowers women and make sure that that women in the workforce, but women in our society generally, have the support that they need. If we do that, if we deal with uh, economic uncertainty and security among America's women, uh, our country will be better off. So this is a conversation. We invite people to participate. They can go to our website to RSVP, or they can just show up. We'll have uh, daycare available for, for people who have children and, and need that kind of support. So we really hope that people come to this event. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you for uh, taking up this cause thank on you. behalf of women. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Now, once again, the When Women Succeed, America Succeeds is taking place this Wednesday afternoon at the University of Michigan Flint in the University Center. It's from 1 until 3. Free child care will be provided for children over 18 months old. Leslie?